Hi guys and welcome to the video. So we have a season three trailer for Star Trek Picard. I was deep in my slumber last night when it uh, when it was revealed. So I woke up to it this morning. I won't show any of the trailer here because I got a copyright strike bad UK danger man for streaming Star Trek Day and criticizing it. So I won't be showing any of the trailer. I will obviously show the screenshots that I usually do. This trailer embodies what I think are the main problems with New Trek is that they tend to focus on one thing and you know they'll occasionally dip into other things but mainly the main focus has been certainly for the writers of New Trek it has been the Wrath of Khan because they know that a lot of Star Trek fans actually have a favorite movie and it's called the wrath of fucking Khan. but this seems to be going in exactly the same direction and there's reasons i'm going to go into for me saying that and for me having that point of view because if you watch the trailer with your wrath of Khan glasses on you can see all the similarities between this trailer and the wrath of Khan. there's even some bits of into darkness in there as well which i'll get into let me just break down the trailer. The trailer opens, uh, Picard is sitting down to a meal and he is called away by two Starfleet uh, officers. There's been a distress call from Beverly Crusher and it brings Picard back into Starfleet out of retirement again because he's retired three, four times now. I can't keep track. So he's back in Starfleet. It would appear that he's gathering his old, his old crew for a mission to go and rescue Crusher. Somebody says we're being hunted and it shows Raffi. Picard asks, you know, who is out there? Who's after us? And Crusher says, I don't know. So clearly she's been the bait because she's in some sort of cryo tube, some sort of, um, you know, frozen in carbonite situation. But she's, she's in cryostasis when Picard finds her. It would appear that she is the bait, like I've said. Picard says, we need to run. We need to go. We need to run. Because that's what Picard does. He just runs. He runs away from everything these days. We see Worf. He speaks and he says he's a pacifist now. Or he leans towards being a pacifist. This goddamn Klingon warrior, one of the most badass Klingon warriors in Star Trek, is leaning more towards being a pacifist now. What Klingon wants to be a pacifist? The ones that aren't doctors or, or, or scientists and whatever. You know, but why? They don't understand what Worf is. Clearly, by this trailer. A pacifist? I mean, don't get me wrong. Worf looks absolutely badass. The grey really suits him. And he, he, the whole character just screams badass. But then he goes, well, I'm a pacifist now. I don't like fighting. What a load of crap. Crusher says it will be what it was always been, attempts on your life to Picard. So clearly someone is trying to kill Picard. It's an entire revenge story. We see LaForge. He badges Picard by saying you dragged other people into this. We have the bad girl. We have the antagonist. Uh, her name is Vadik. Vadik? At least that's what the subtitle said. And she's going to be the Khan character. So it's going to be Wrath of Vadik. <gasps> Wrath of Karen. Wrath of Karen. That's going to be the title of my video. This is going to be the Wrath of Karen. I think her and her crew are going to be augments because it was mentioned in the last episode of Picard season two that about Project Khan and all of that jazz because they seem to have a rock solid boner for Khan. Picard's being lured out, not law. I'll get to that in a moment. He's being lured out into space so someone can enact vengeance on him. There's dog fighting in a nebula, which we haven't seen before, have we? This Vadic character, Vedic character, wants to destroy the Federation, but wants to start with Picard for whatever reason. She might be an ex-Federation member. She might be, could be anyone at this point, but I think she's an augment. I think they're going full Wrath of Karen, Khan, Karen, Karen Khan. Full Wrath of Karen Khan. So the, yeah, the trailer sort of ends with two reveals, two surprise reveals. One makes absolutely no fucking sense within the narrative, but I'm sure they might find a way to make it 50% make sense, I suppose. One is Moriarty. Now, we all remember Moriarty from the uh, Next Gen ep episodes, uh, Ship in the Bottle and Elementary Dear Data. He's the computer program that was made sentient. He's, you know, the, the arch nemesis of Sherlock Holmes. And, you know, Data was acting as Sherlock Holmes. And LaForge said the, you know, 
give me an opponent worthy of defeating Data instead of Sherlock Holmes. And Moriarty was brought into Sension. And then in the ship in a bottle, he was tricked into being ran in a little computer module for the rest of his existence. But he's back. Moriarty is back. Why? I mean, I'm sure it's going to be explained somewhat in 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 the in the season but moriarty is back i don't understand i don't see the significance of that yet i'm just like yeah whatever Mor moriarty is back and then and this is the really confusing part we see law now i referenced law earlier in my extremely bad pun law played by brent spiner looking old brent spiner said he doesn't want to play data no more because he's too old for the part and it won't look realistic and he's just too old to play data who is an android who doesn't age. But Law's an android and he doesn't age. It might not be Law, that might be a trailer trick or a trailer trap. It might be B4, but it's certainly not going to be Data because Data's dead. And then the trailer ends. That's that's the trailer. That's what the trailer is. Now, I, uh, <laughs> I don't know what I was expecting from this trailer, but I know that I should have been expecting darkness because there's all, there's a whole fuck ton of darkness in this trailer. It's, it's exceptionally dark. There's only one bright scene in it where a Federation building is destroyed, which just resembled into darkness. Okay, yeah, they destroyed the Federation, Trade Federation droid ship from Star Wars, which is what it looks like to me. <laughs> so they're, they're just bringing in loads of elements that they think work from previous stuff that they've done based on real Star Trek. But they're not achieving anything, in my uh, in my opinion. You've got the typical new Trek trope of the enemy ships all looking really spiky. And everything looks spiky. Just like in the first 2009 Star Trek reboot. It, you know, uh, Nero's ship was all... It, it looked like a freaking blooming flower uh, without petals. This looks like, you know, it's going to jab you. And all these ships, I don't understand what the hell the design is there. I, maybe maybe I'm missing something, I don't know. But they seem to they seem to really like that design of ship. I know that they didn't really want to make Next Gen again. They don't really want to make Star Trek. They want to make their Star Trek, which is which is incredibly different to what Star Trek actually is. But this just looks like it's going to rip off everything. It looks like it's just going to rip off itself. It's going to rip off previous new Trek. Star Trek, Picard, Season 3, The Wrath of fucking Karen. I'm not massively impressed with it. I wasn't impressed with the trailer. And I've got to say that I don't understand why they brought Moriarty in other than a cameo or a, a, like a little treat to the fans. It's not even as if he was big to the Next Generation story. He was in two episodes and he was very cleverly given a send off. So why pull him back? And bringing back De Brent Spiner as Law, who is surprisingly in a Starfleet uniform, looks older. I'm sure there's some logical explanation for that. Just seems really daft to me. The entire setup seems really daft. And I think I'm going to have an awful lot of fun reviewing season three next year when it comes out in February. There are, there are a few bits that went, oh, OK. Yeah, we see the Enterprise F. OK, we see the Enterprise F. My bet in it is that it's going to be destroyed very early on. Um, it's going to be destroyed and that's going to be the first step of this Karen's character, this Vadic Karen person. She's going to destroy the Enterprise F and there's going to be someone from the next generation on it. Probably not a main cast member. Um, you know, he could be being piloted by Tasha Yar because apparently Denise Crosby is coming back. So I've heard that could be a false rumor. I don't know. Either way, it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest. Then, then someone's going to die. Some one of the next gen crew is going to die, or several of them are going to die. They're going to be picked off one by one. And Picard's going to be taught a lesson because he needs to be taught another fucking lesson every season. He's got to be taught a lesson. I don't understand the, why they keep Raffi in there. I'd have preferred they kept Rios and just got rid of Raffi. Because Raffi's just bloody annoying. We all hate Raffi. What an awful character Raffi is. I hope she's one of the first to go. I think we see a scene where her and Worf are fighting. But I, I really can't say I'm that bothered. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to review it. I'm going to probably rip the living piss out of it. Because that's what I do. It's a sad state of affairs, really, isn't it? Because we we love the next generation. We love the cast. We love the crew. But you have to put a divide in with this show to say this is not really the next gen cast. Bookend it. Separate it. Put it put it in a different category. Because 
they are going to destroy the next generation. We all know it. At the end of the day, they are going to rip it to pieces. They're going to give us the grand finale of the next generation. And it's going to be horse shit. You know it is. Why even fight it anymore? The trailer it just sets up a new Wrath of Khan. Instead of the Enterprise, it's going to be on the Titan because they'd have destroyed the Enterprise. We do see some sort of celebration going on at a space dock with fireworks and everything. So it seems like a happy occasion. But you all know that's going to just turn to darkness because that's all we do now is everything's dark. Everything's depressing. Our media isn't bright and cheerful. You've got the Orville for bright and cheerful now. The Orville was, season three, was uh, it had its darker moments, but it was still bright and positive, and Picard just isn't. There was also a, a, a Discovery, little Discovery thing that dropped as well. I'm not going to do a video on it because it wasn't really worth covering. It was just more of the same, just Discovery being Discovery and Burnham being Space Jesus. It, it, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm still going to review it when it comes out. I'm going to sit and watch it and slowly watch my brain drivel out of my ear. For now, we have Picard. It's going to air in February. I'm going to be doing videos on it. The trailer was just meh, pointless, and I just don't think it's going to go anywhere. Other YouTubers have said it's going to be really good, that they've watched it, it's going to be great. I don't buy it for a second. I got sucked in with Picard season two in the first episode because I thought, finally, they're doing something right. But unfortunately, it just sank so quickly you wouldn't believe so that's it those are my thoughts on the trailer for picard season three let me know your thoughts in the comments uh, below and if you're new here consider subscribing to the channel i do have other review videos i do have a few videos in the making stuff is coming but it's a little slow life has gone a little, a little hectic but i will be doing a live stream event in the next couple of weeks and i shall be doing it with a guest and we'll be discussing our favorite next generation episodes so i look forward to that i will uh, schedule the live stream so you don't miss that hopefully you'll get the notifications until next time you look after yourselves you look after one another take care thank you so much bye bye for now Shelter. I know I'll only find peace in your smile.